Hello world and welcome to Web Dev Frontiers. My name is Tomasz and I'm here to share my experience with you in WebTech. In today's video, I've got something very exciting to show you and that is going to be the defer block in Angular. With this new Angular 17 feature, you can essentially lazy load your components based on certain conditions. And I'm going to show you a couple of cool examples to see how to put this defer block in action. Furthermore, I'm going to show you an extra little trick that you can do in your Angular application, especially if you have some heavy JavaScript processing going on somewhere in your code. If you're ready, let's do this. I have already created an Angular application using the ng new command via the Angular CLI, and it is, of course, using Angular version 17. And I already created a couple of components as well. So first of all, let's take a look at the root definition. So essentially on the main page, I'm going to load the home component. The home component has a snowflake component, which you will see what it does and why I have it there in just a moment. It also uses a new for control flow to actually iterate through a number of snowflakes. And then I have the welcome and the spacer components. The welcome component really has an H1 in between a section elements that says hello world. And the spacer component just has a text called space holder. And inside app component, I have, of course, the router definition so that we can see the individual routes that we load into this Angular application. So let's go to my browser to see how this application looks like. So we have hello world here, we get the snowflakes, it's like a snowfall, and every component in this particular sample project that we're going to go through is going to occupy 100% of the screen real estate. And so if I now scroll down, the space component has a space holder text here, and I added this because I would like to demonstrate you something when we add yet another component. Okay, so now we have two of these components. Let's go back to the editor and create another component called the Fibonacci component. And the reason why I create a Fibonacci component is very simple. I would like to have a mathematical calculation in one of my components mimicking what happens if you have some code that is blocking the main thread in JavaScript. Now remember, JavaScript is single threaded, so anything that is a mathematical calculation or anything that is intensive CP operation is going to block the main thread from additional processing. So if you have a Fibonacci calculation, the browser will not be able to do anything else until it has calculated whatever you asked it to calculate. And I'm using this technique to artificially slow down the application to show you what happens if you have some slow code somewhere within your app. Now, Angular, even though you write TypeScript, that still uses the whole JavaScript concept, so the same rules apply to your Angular application as well. So let's go ahead and create this Fibonacci component now together. So I'm going to come to the CLI and I'm just going to type in ng generate component and then I'm going to call that Fibonacci. And that automatically will create a folder here with the appropriate CSS, HTML, test and of course the TypeScript file as well. So let's actually open this and I'm going to use this Fibonacci component to write a Fibonacci function and I'm going to add some functionality in here. All right, so I have added all the required things here, a result variable, which is a number, an input called num, so that's going to be an input property that this particular component is going to accept. I have the actual Fibonacci function, which is going to take the number and it's going to return the nth number of Fibonacci number. And last but not least, on initializing this component, I'm just going to calculate whatever Fibonacci number we're asking for, and then we're going to store that in result. Now let's go into the template, and I'm just going to have a section element in here. And in between those section elements, again, I'm just going to use a simple H1 to print out the result that we get. So the result is going to be the Fibonacci calculation. I'm also going to apply some styles to make sure that the result also appears in a very same fashion that we've seen before for the other components. So let's save everything and let's now go to the home component because this is the place where I would like to add my Fibonacci component. So I'm going to be adding that here like so. And since I'm using Angular 17 and I'm also using standalone components, inside the home component definition in the imports section, I need to make sure that I import the Fibonacci component. 
otherwise I wouldn't be able to use that and now the error is gone from my template as well so I can save this and I can fire up my development server by using ng-serve and go back to the browser and see what we get as a result all right so we're back in the browser notice the snowflakes are gone we're going to fix that in a moment we get hello world we get the space holder and now we get this orange background but there's nothing in here the reason why there's nothing in here because we have never passed the appropriate property to this new Fibonacci component. So let's go back to the editor and fix that. So let's say that we would like to calculate the, let's go with the 45th Fibonacci number, which is a really high number, and it's going to take the browser quite a while to figure that one out. All right, so page reload should be done. Let's go back to the browser and immediately see that there is a slowdown. So let me just refresh this again once for you. Notice that the snowflakes freeze, something loads for quite a long time, and now everything is back to normal. Let's go to the bottom. And we do, in fact, get the 45th Fibonacci number. But notice that something slowed down the application significantly. And of course, the slowdown is caused by the CPU utilization and the main thread blocking by the Fibonacci function. But here's my question to you. Does it make sense to see a page slow down even when you don't see that particular part of the page. In other words, I'm just looking at Hello World, but this page freezes, and in fact, the entire application freezes because there is some calculation done behind the scenes that I'm not even seeing yet. And we should be able to fix this. And in fact, with the deeper block, we can very easily fix this particular behavior inside Angular applications. So let's go ahead and see how that would work. Now, when using the defer block, you have a couple of options. For example, you could defer the loading of your components based on user interaction. So you could, for example, say that only load the component when someone hovers over a particular element. You could also enable a timer. So you could say load a particular component after two seconds. But one of my favorites and the one that we're going to be utilizing in this video is going to be the viewport display. So what that means is you can defer the loading of a particular component inside Angular and defer it until it becomes visible in the viewport. It's essentially a way of lazy loading an element when it becomes visible to your users. So let's take a look at how that would work. So to use the defer block, all I need to do is specify add defer, and then I need to specify a criteria. And the criteria that we're going to be using is on viewport. So we're literally going to type in on viewport and then we need to have angle brackets and wrap the Fibonacci component around those. Furthermore, we can also have a placeholder component. So I'm going to add placeholder. And in here, we can add another particular component. Now I already created this component and it component is just called loading and all it does it displays the text loading so let's see how the behavior changes now so let's save this let's go back to my browser and refresh the page so now we get hello world and notice every time when i refresh the page the snowflakes are falling there's no visible lagging or there's no visible processing going on in the browser everything seems to be very smooth so let's keep on scrolling so we get the space holder as always and let's see what happens if we get to the very bottom all right we get the loading component and we're going to see this loading component until the browser calculates the 45th fibonacci number okay let's go through this again so i'm on the top of the page nothing is slowing down my application and that is the reason why you see these snowflakes because you know otherwise the snowflakes would freeze let's go to space holder and now we get the loading indicator however do notice that the snowflakes freeze and they will freeze until the browser calculates the 45th Fibonacci number so i wonder is there something that we can do about this and the good news is we can so i'm going to show you what you can do with the differ attribute and another thing called the web worker API inside an Angular application to make sure that nothing slows down your application, even when you have some heavy JavaScript processing going on. So let's see how to do this. 
let's go back to my editor and in here we're going to quit the running process and we're going to call the generate command to generate a web worker so we're going to type in ngg web worker and we're going to specify that the web worker should be enabled for our application right here so i'm just going to type in app and by default notice we get two files created app worker.ts the configuration for TypeScript changes as well, and then we get updates to AngularJSON and AppComponent.ts. So if we scroll down, we now have an AppWorker.ts. So for those of you not familiar with the concept of the Web Worker API, what it does, it allows you to offload some JavaScript processing to a separate thread. So essentially, the JavaScript that you run inside the Web Workers will run in a separate thread off from the main thread, which means that the main thread is now free to do additional processing. And that's exactly what we want. Now we need to do some configuration and some tweaking around to make this happen, but bear with me because we're going to go through that together right now. So notice here that we have an event listener or message that basically sends data to the web worker. And then the web worker can do something with that data and then send a response back by using the post message function. So what I'm going to do, first of all, is I'm going to bring the Fibonacci function in here. And inside the response, I am going to take the data that comes in and just pass that to the Fibonacci function. OK, so this particular web worker is going to receive a number, for example, 45 and it, we're going to pass that to the Fibonacci function, which is then going to calculate the 45th Fibonacci number. And that number is then going to be sent back to the main thread by using post message. OK, so let's save this. But there are some other changes that we need to make. Now, by default, if you look at app.component.ts, Angular has updated that for us and it added these particular lines. Now, we're going to take this because I don't think this should be here and we're going to move that to somewhere else. And the appropriate place for this is going to be inside the Fibonacci component itself. All right, so inside ng on init, we're going to get rid of this particular line and we're going to replace it with all of this. Now, we basically check whether the Web Worker API is available. If it's not, then we basically need a fallback scenario. Now, what is the fallback scenario? Well, the fallback scenario is unfortunately we need to take this dot result and we need to now call this dot Fibonacci with this dot num right here. We just have to make the same method call that we had before. However, if the web worker API is available, then we need to fire up a new web worker and we can essentially reference the app worker file that we have created. Now, since we are one directory or one level down here, we need to go one level up to find app.worker. And now the next couple of lines are very interesting. So first of all, notice we have worker.postmessage hello. So post message is going to be the method that will send the data to the web worker. So what we need to do here is essentially we need to take this dot num. So we need to send that value that comes from the property down to the web worker. And when we get the response back, then we just need to say that this dot result is equal to data. OK, so let's see if we can get this to work a little bit faster for us. So let's fire up our developer server and go back to the browser and see what we get. OK, so let's scroll up to the very top. So we get hello world. We get the space holder and we get the orange bit. Notice we no longer get the loading indicator, but the snowflakes do not freeze. So it means that something is working. And there you have it. Here is the Fibonacci number without a single bit of freeze. Now, this is great, but I'm not really a fan of just showing a blank screen. So what if we could use the loading indicator in conjunction with the web worker API. Now, the good news is the deferred block inside Angular allows you to set up your own custom mechanisms for deferring loading of components. So let's actually take a look at how that would work. And so I'm back in my editor and we're going to make a quick change. So let's go back to the home component. And instead of using this deferred block here and the placeholder, let's remove that. 
because technically we don't need to defer the loading of this anymore because it, the processing happens behind the scenes. And instead, go back to the Fibonacci component and do a defer block for the result here. So how can we actually do that? Well, as I said before, we can have our own custom logic for the defer block in Angular 17. And we're going to be implementing that. So all we need to do is figure out a way to utilize this custom logic for the Fibonacci component. So what I'm going to do is go to the Fibonacci component TypeScript definition. And in here, I'm going to introduce a new class variable. And let's just call this done, which is going to be a Boolean. And I'm going to make that equal to false first. So by default, the value is going to be set to false. And of course, what I'm going to do is whether the result comes back from the web worker API or whether it's coming back from the actual local Fibonacci function, which is going to set this dot done to be true and do the same right here as well. And just save this. And now we can use the done class member and use it in conjunction with the defer block. So what I'm going to say is essentially the same logic as before. So defer, and we're going to say when done, then display the result. Otherwise, we're going to have a placeholder, and then we're going to just use the same old app loading component as before. Now again, just a kind reminder, since we're using standalone components, we need to come into the Fibonacci components. And in the import bit, we need to import the loading component like so. And after making these modifications, let's save all these files and go to the browser to see the result. So let's go back to the browser and see what happens. Let me also refresh. Snowflakes are falling. We get hello world. We now get the space holder and we have the loading component. And notice that there's nothing is freezing, nothing is slowing down in our, in our app. And when the web worker API is done, it just displays a number. And I could actually stay on the screen here and I still got loading. Nothing is blocking the UI. Nothing is blocking the code execution. And then once the calculation is done, we just get that. Now, if you're curious what happens behind the scenes, I can actually show that to you as well. So if you come here and you create a production build in the CLI using the ng build command, you will notice that you get lazy chunk files. So every time when you use defer, either with a custom attribute, either with a timer on viewport or in any other way that is supported by Angular 17, you're going to get these lazy chunk files indicating that this particular piece of JavaScript code is going to be lazy loaded in your Angular application where and when it is necessary. The very last example that I will show you with regards to the defer block is going to be defer on hover. I prepared another example and I've pre-created this. I've added two additional components to this Angular application. One is called the food card and the other one is called the gallery. And notice that inside the gallery component itself, I am iterating through all the dishes that I have. These are just going to be Italian dishes. And for each of the dishes, I call the app food card component. But this app food card component is essentially going to be only loaded when I hover my mouse over the component itself. All right, so let's take a look at this inside my browser. All we need to do is go to slash gallery. And notice I have the foods here. So I have a loading indicator as well. So I did that as a CSS animation. And I have the cards ready, but no images. But the moment I hover my mouse over these individual images, or rather these cards, then now all these images load. And we can actually verify this if I go to the network panel, hit refresh, clear everything in a network panel, you will notice that as I hover my mouse over these, that's when these images will be added. So they are truly lazy loaded. So this is another option that you can use in Angular with the defer block. And that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video and you found it to be informative. Please let me know in the comments below if you plan on or if you are already using the defer block and also share your experience with it, what use cases you see fit for this. Please share that with everyone. So I hope you learned something from this video. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Also do subscribe 
and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.